Are you one to judge a book by its cover? Now all this month, you will notice that I have essentially focused each of my sermons on both honor and respect. I focused on how we should honor the Lord in our service and how we should cherish him for his amazing grace, Mm -hmm. the grace that saved us and the grace that the Lord continues to show to all of us today. Mm -hmm. Again, that is honor and respect. Mm -hmm. As we know, it is black history month and tomorrow will be the final. It will be the last day of this month. And the reason why I have focused on honor and the reason why I have focused on respect this month is because that is what black history is all about to me. Black history is all about honoring and respecting all of those that came uh, before me, all those that came uh, before us. Now, sadly, our history, it is chock full of a lack of honor and a lack of respect that people that look as we do were treated by. People that look as we do were treated harshly. They were treated unfairly. And that is just to put it lightly. There are more words that we could use if we wanted to. And I have found that when one is treated harshly, when one is treated unfairly, it all comes back to what one has judged, what one has determined about somebody. Mm -hmm. People that look like me weren't thought of all that highly. We weren't thought of very highly. And so we were treated like we were trash. Mm -hmm. We were treated like we were nothing, and that is the truth. Where the Lord created all of us to be there for one another and to treat each other kindly with honor and with respect, it seems that man does everything but that. And I began to wonder to myself, why is that the case? Well, this is the case, I believe, because the way we treat someone lies in what we think, what we think of them, what we think of them and how we have judged them. All right. All right. See, what we think of someone and how we have judged someone in our heart is the way in which we will go about treating them. Mm -hmm. So if we don't think highly of them, guess how we're going to treat them? All right. But if we think very highly of them, guess how we are going to treat them? Mm -hmm. You see, it is not right for the child of God to judge someone in the same manner that someone of the world would judge someone. You see, I feel it is very important for us to look at our heart today because there are many people who judge somebody by the book of the cover, Mm -hmm. by their outward appearance. Whereas the believer, we cannot do this. No, we must honor and we must cherish all of those that are around us just as we would honor, just as we would cherish the Lord, our God. So let us focus in on this today. If you have listened to me preach over the years, then you know that I focus a great deal on the conduct I focus a great deal on the behavior of the Christian. Mm -hmm. I do this often because of what I have seen and what I have noticed from those that profess to be a follower of Christ, from those that profess to have faith in the Lord. In the past, I tell you that there were so many so-called believers that led the charge on the mistreatment of people that look just as we do. They said that they believed in the Lord. They said that they believed in Christ, yet they led the charge on mistreating, doing wrong by people. I tell you today, to be frank, there are still many who profess to have faith in the Lord today that still treat people with all manner of dishonor and disrespect. 
I believe there are many people, again, who are so-called believers, right. who judge with a judgment that is impaired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the believer with impaired judgment simply does not sound right. All right. So we have to take a moment to focus on this as I want to focus on us now honoring mm -hmm. and respecting our neighbors mm -hmm. today. First, we have to consider where our judgment is coming from. Right. You see, most people judge from a worldly perspective because their heart is given to the world. Mm -hmm. now, let us remember that the term of the world or worldly, when I use that term, I'm speaking of all of those that oppose the Lord. All of those that do not live by the way of the Lord, but they live by the way they live by the principles, the logic that is of the world. Those who are of the world judge from a worldly perspective, whereas the believer ought not judge from a worldly perspective. The believer ought to judge from a perspective that is led by the spirit. Because it is the spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of the hearts of all of those that genuinely believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. So if we genuinely believe in Christ, then our judgment should come from a place that is of Christ. Yeah. Come on. Come on. See, when Jesus spoke of judging someone, he said that we ought not judge a person if we have not yet removed the speck out of our own eye. Right. So in other words, Jesus was saying, don't judge someone as if you yourself are perfect when you are not perfect. Do you hear me there today? Yeah. Yeah. Now, some may believe that this is a logic that is of the world, but this is all spiritual. Mm -hmm. This is holy and this is righteous. It came yeah. from Jesus, who again is God in the flesh. Well, yeah. Now, in his second letter to the Corinthians, mm -hmm. Paul, he asked a question that leads us more into how flawed judging by a worldly wisdom or a worldly perspective actually is. Mm -hmm. Paul, he asked the question, do you look at things according to the outward appearance? Mm -hmm. you know, some will say yes, and others will say no to this question. Now, I would suggest a couple of things about those who would answer and say no to this question. This question again is, do you look at things according to the outward appearance? Those, I believe, that say no to this question, they are either uh, vision impaired, they may struggle to see, or they are truly blind mm -hmm. and they cannot see. All right. Come on. Even then, when clear evidence, when clear facts are given to those who are vision impaired or those who are blind and cannot see, when the facts are given, they can, quote unquote, see. Right. Yeah. They have been given the truth. And because they have been given the truth, they can make a proper judgment. Mm -hmm. So if one says that they do not look at things according to the outward appearance, that means which is given. That means what is plain to see. I tell you today that they are lying. Mm -hmm. Because all of us, we look on things by the outward appearance. <laughs> Maya Angelou once said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. So I would suggest to you today that Paul's question essentially runs along the same lines as Maya Angelou's saying there. Unfortunately, a lot of folks, they look the wrong way meaning they judge the wrong way. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of folks is vision, their judgment, it is blinded by their own personal bias, well, mm -hmm. their own personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so they refuse to see what can be plain and what can be made clear to them. Mm -hmm. 
In other words, mm -hmm. they can refuse or they can be blinded to the facts mm -hmm. and to the truth mm -hmm. because of their own personal beliefs, mm -hmm. their own personal feelings, their own personal bias. Well. Mm -hmm. For the believer, we have to remember that Christ has lifted such a veil from off of our eyes. Yeah, yeah. We have to remember that God, Christ, has given to us the truth. The truth, in other words, has become plain and clear to us. And mm -hmm. as a child of the Lord, we cannot be ignorant to the truth. Right. We cannot be blind to the truth. We cannot be blind to facts because of our own personal feelings, mm -hmm. because of our own personal emotions, mm -hmm. because of our own personal bias. Right. Mm -hmm. We know and we'll see that judging by personal bias, it is very tragic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is very flawed. <clears throat> It is a very tragic flaw in the world that is present today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will be incredibly tragic for us as believers to use that flaw right. to judge someone by. Mm -hmm. Because again, the way that we judge somebody mm -hmm. is the way that we are going to treat somebody. All right. All right. So therefore our judgment of somebody cannot be impaired, if you will. Our judgment of somebody cannot be flawed, if you will. So we will see here in the second chapter of James that James, he speaks of the tragedy. He speaks of this tragedy in believers judging and treating others according to their own personal bias rather than by the spirit that dwells in them. Let us notice that James, he plainly opens this second chapter there in the first verse mm -hmm. by saying, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. James says there very plainly with partiality. That's what it says. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, very plain, very clear there. James, he advises the believer, mm -hmm. the genuine believer, the true follower of Christ, mm -hmm. not to be partial mm -hmm. when it comes to the faith, mm -hmm. not to be biased mm -hmm. when it comes to Christ himself. Mm -hmm. I'm not making that up there. Mm -hmm. No, to be partial is to be inclined to favor one party more than the other. Yeah, yeah. Now, you may recall that I preached recently, God cannot be bought. Right. And in that sermon, I spoke about how the Lord is impartial, mm -hmm. how the Lord is unbiased, mm -hmm. how he is righteous in his judgment because he is unbiased. Mm -hmm. He's impartial in his judgment. You see, God, he does not show favoritism when it comes to his judgment. Mm -hmm. He is no respecter of persons, as we are told. The Lord is both faithful and just, mm -hmm. which means that God is fair. Mm -hmm. So if the Lord is fair, if the Lord is just, mm -hmm. if he is faithful in his judgment and his judgment is impartial, his judgment is unbiased, then why should we, the child of God, be any different in our judgment? Amen. Why should we be any different from our father? I don't know if you hear me here today. Amen. The gospel of God, as Jesus commissioned us to do, it is to be shared among all people, yeah. all right. regardless of race, mm -hmm. regardless of creed, regardless of class, regardless of our own bias, mm -hmm. regardless of, of those who we would wish to choose to believe for ourselves. All right. All right. The gospel is to be shared among 
all people. Let us remember that God gave his only begotten son to all people and not to a specific group of people. Jesus said that he was given to the world because God loved the world and gave his only begotten son to all nations of people. So favoritism, bias, I tell you today, partiality should have absolutely no part when it comes to serving the Lord because they are not a part of him. They're not a part of him. They ought not be a part of you. However, there are some believers who have the gumption. They have the notion that they can pick, that they can choose who is worthy of the gospel of God. They believe that they have a say in who is worthy Mm -hmm. of hearing, of knowing the gospel of God. Mm -hmm. This would mean that they are using their own judgment Mm -hmm. to determine who is worthy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When God has already said that all people are worthy of him. Who are we to do that? Mm -hmm. Who are you to be that way? Mm -hmm. So think about this for a moment. God has commanded us to love our neighbors as we see mentioned here in our key verse there in the eighth verse today, Mm -hmm. which James said would fulfill the Lord's law, which we know would also fulfill his grace. This love of our neighbor It is to be impartial. It is to go out to all nations of people. Mm -hmm. Yet some believe that they can pick and choose that they can be partial to whom they will love when it comes to fulfilling their faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now I would ask the question today, does that sound right? Does it sound right for the believer Mm -hmm. to do, to be that way in their judgment and then in their treatment of somebody? Now here again in this passage of scripture from the second chapter of James, Mm -hmm. we'll notice there in the second verse that James, he speaks of the treatment of two people that entered into the assembly. The assembly, I want you to know today, is the place of worship. At that point in time, it was the synagogue, if you will. Mm -hmm. We're told that in the second verse that one man entered into the assembly and this man was wearing gold rings and fine apparel. while another man entered into the assembly and we're told that this man was considered to be poor Mm -hmm. because of what he was wearing. We're told that this man who was thought to be poor, he was wearing, we're told, filthy clothes. Now, we would think that two people who were entering into the synagogue, Mm -hmm. into the assembly, we would think that all of those who would enter into the church hall today, we would think that they would all be treated the same. We would would think here in this scripture that these two men would have been treated with the same honor, that they would have been treated with the same amount of respect by those who were in and of that assembly. Yet we see here in this scripture that one was honored while the other was disregarded treated like he was trash, treated like he was nothing. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar? The man that was dressed in fine apparel, we are told, was given special treatment. Mm -hmm. We are told that he was told to go and sit in a quote unquote good place. We see there in the third verse that the other man that was thought to be poor. We don't know if he was poor. 
but they thought he was poor because he was wearing 50 clothes. We are told that he was told to go and stand elsewhere. If he did not feel like standing, we're told that he was told to go and take a seat at the footstool, meaning he was told to go and sit on the floor. Treated again like he was trash. Treated again like he was nothing. Now, why do you suppose such treatment was happening in that place of worship? Out of all places in the assembly. See, I tell you that this was happening due to impaired judgment. It was happening because there was impaired judgment that was going on in the hearts of those who were in that assembly. See, I believe that this was something that James had actually witnessed happen. He said if there, but I don't believe this, this, any of this was hypothetical. I believe that James actually witnessed that this had happened inside of the assembly and he was bringing up this nastiness. He was bringing it to light here today. Those in the assembly, they were judging the one in fine clothing with very high regard. He looked good. So they were treating them differently. They, 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 they were, they had judged him there with very high regard and they treated him with very high regard. On the other hand, the other one, they thought that he was poor because of how he was dressed. So the one who was poor and in filthy clothes, he was not being judged. He was not being regarded with such high regard, was he? And so because he was not being regarded with such high regard, we see that he was treated with little to no regard. In our days, we are told uh, that he was told to go and stand back in the back, stand away from people. You don't belong up here with us was the kind of treatment that he received. So James there, he touched. Thank you, auntie. I'm about to get to that. No, no, no. You right there with me spiritually. That's fine. James there, he, he touched on the ugliness, didn't he, auntie? He, he touched on, on, on the shrewdness that can come from those that judge and act out of their own bias, their own partiality that has been fed to them by the world. Had those of the assembly moved out of genuine faith in their judgment, both men would have been regarded very highly. They would have been regarded the same and they would have been treated the same. They would have been treated with the same honor. They would have been treated with the same respect. Now imagine this for a moment. Uh, imagine that that those people who were acting with such partiality inside of the congregation hall, inside of the assembly, imagine if they were acting that way inside of the assembly, how they were acting outside of the assembly, how they were acting, how they were judging, how they were treating people beyond the walls of the assembly. Just imagine what they were doing. Auntie said it. No. It still happens today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we judge by the outward appearance, but we don't judge right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Yeah. And it bothers me. It bothers me greatly because mm-hmm. this mindset, again, is still very present in our world today mm-hmm. inside of the assembly. And even beyond the walls of the assembly. Not only am I concerned that this type of judgment and action happens in the assembly and beyond the walls of the assembly. I'm also concerned from the place in which this stuff is coming from. This is coming from the heart. Again, if this is coming from your heart and you say that you believe in the Lord, something ain't right. Some, something something is going terribly wrong inside of you. Yes. And as I say often, it's time for a heart check. Amen. It's time for you to go to the doctor and get your heart looked at because something has gone wrong 
if you are acting that way in the assembly and then beyond the assembly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this right now. God don't want you being that way. A long time ago, I preached God don't like ugly. Mm -hmm. And you better believe God don't like that. Amen. Not one bit. Yeah, yeah. As we see again this week, mm -hmm. it is a sin to be so unjust, yeah. to be so shrewd right. to others. Mm -hmm. And God does not like an unjust steward. Yeah. The people we see doing this in the assembly, mm -hmm. we're not judging what was within the two men. All right. See, this is how we properly judge. Mm -hmm. They were not judging what was within, but were solely judging based on what they seen on the outside. Mm -hmm. Their perception was wrong. Yeah, yeah. Those who had judged the two men in such a manner, we should understand, were making the mistake of judging by worldly principles mm -hmm. rather than with the veil lifted from their eyes. Oh, yeah. See, those who've had that veil lifted from their eyes, they judge differently. Mm -hmm. It's not just by the outside, mm -hmm. but what they get from the inside mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We'll see James confirm for us there. He points out for us there that they had judged in a manner that was partial. And we're told that in the fourth verse that there was evil thoughts there. In other words, there were evil intent there. Mm -hmm. and, and we know again that, that this evil intent came from the world. Because they was using worldly logic, worldly wisdom to make a determination about these two men. All right. All right. Now, now think about this for a moment. Consider this for a moment here today. Consider that both men may have possibly been of the faith, right? Mm -hmm. Both of these men may have been of the faith. And if that was the case, why then should they both be treated any differently? because of the way that they were dressed because of the way that they look why should they have been treated any differently let us also then consider the possibility that one may have been of the faith while the other may have not been of the faith and again if that was the case why then should both of them been treated any differently they're both coming to the assembly so why should they have been treated any differently because of the way that they were dressed or the way that they looked? Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. Let us then consider another possibility here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us consider that neither one of them was of the faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should they have been treated any differently? No. I mean, if that was the case, why then should they have both been treated any differently because of what they look like? on the outside mm -hmm. again to think and then act in such a manner has been used to do nothing good in our world mm -hmm. to to think to judge and to treat people mm -hmm. from that place in your heart mm -hmm. in such a manner has been used to do nothing but create division right. heartache pain burden, stress, trouble all around our world today, especially in our society today. Mm -hmm. We not only have history, but we see it here in the present. Amen. As he said, it is still going on today. Yeah, yeah. Such impaired judgment and shrewd behavior, I tell you today, it is truly wicked. Mm -hmm. And I tell you that this should not come from, this should not be part of one whose conscience is being led by the Holy Spirit. One whose conscience is being led by the grace of God. Do you hear me here today? Uh, yeah, yeah. To show us what our judgment and therefore our treatment of others should be like, we see that James, he points to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He points to the Lord and shows us again that we need to follow in his example. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what I said last week? Mm -hmm. Last week, we saw that it is important for us, the child of God, 
to follow his example, not in some things, but in all things. We are to follow his example. In his righteous judgment, James, he pointed out there in the fifth verse that the Lord chose the poor of our world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. The kingdom that he's talking about there is the kingdom of the Lord. Now, I want you to understand that this was not something that James was making up. This was something that the Lord had spoke on as well. In the Gospels, we will recall in his sermon on the Mount that Jesus stated that the kingdom of heaven belongs to the poor. All right. All right. Now, was Jesus judging based on the outward appearance of those who may be poor? I mean, I would almost wonder today, what does the poor person look like? I'm poor. Well. <laughs> I ain't rich. What does a poor person look like? Was Jesus, did that statement come from him looking around at people and saying, oh, they're poor? We, we have to remember that, that, that Jesus himself was considered poor. Mm-hmm. Now, if we look at that scripture, which comes from the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel and the third verse, we will see that Jesus was specifically talking about those who are poor in the spirit. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. He didn't say blessed are the poor who don't have any money. He didn't say blessed are the poor who don't have any clothes or who don't have a fancy car. He said, blessed are the the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's what James was talking about there. In one of his final lessons, Jesus said to the multitudes and his disciples, he said, he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Mm -hmm. And whoever exalts himself, which is something that those who are rich often do. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, they will be humbled. He said, and he who humbles himself, lowers himself, will be exalted. Jesus said, Mm -hmm. you see, the Lord will exalt, meaning that God will lift up. God will raise up those who are poor in the spirit. Where we will solely judge by the outward appearance, God himself, he does not judge in the same manner. The Lord tells us this himself when he testified of the way that he judges someone. God tells us that he does not look at the outward appearance, but that he looks at and that he searches the heart of man that he looks at and he searches your heart is what he said. God, I want you to understand today. God does not judge a book by his cover. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what God does. God, he goes to his shelf. He picks up the book. He looks at the cover, but then God opens up the book. God then reads through that book. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand to not speak figuratively here today. Mm -hmm. When God picks you up off the shelf, he looks at all of you, Mm -hmm. not just that outward appearance, Mm -hmm. not what you just put on for show, Mm -hmm. for fashion. Mm -hmm. He takes a deep dive on the inside Mm -hmm. and he sees who and what you are in your soul today. Mm -hmm. God, again, does not judge a book by his covers when it comes to you, when it comes to us. He picks it up and he takes a deep dive on the inside. So I want you to understand today that the Lord regards you in that manner. The Lord regards you very highly to do just that, to get to know you for who you really are. The Lord then honors. The Lord then treasures you. And I'm so thankful that God is this way that he has judged me in that way. Not by just whether I have nappy hair or not, not just by whether I wear glasses or not, not because of the color of my skin, but because of who I am in my heart. If the Lord honors us and he regards us in such a manner, 
Why can't we not do the same for our brothers and for our sisters? I'm not just talking about our church family. I'm talking about our brothers and sisters when it comes to all of mankind. You see, we today, we ought to take time to get to know somebody instead of judging a book by its cover. You see, anybody can put on clothes and, and cover themselves and show themselves to be something that they actually ain't. So why do we jump to conclusions based off of what we think or these preconceived conceptions that, that we may have? Why do we treat people based off of what we think rather than what we know? Why do we disregard, why do we dishonor each other so much when the Lord has again created all of us? We are all one in the same, so why do we dishonor? Why do we disregard, why do we disrespect, why do we mistreat one another when we are all one in the same? When I do turn on the news, I often wonder why we hate each other so much. I often wonder why do we hate each other so much to treat one another the way that we treat one another with so little regard, with so little honor, with so little respect. You see, in Jesus, he sat down with the ones who we believe are poor. Jesus, he again sat down with those who we believe are sinners. Mm -hmm. Those who were not righteous. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jesus, he he did this. He sought to do this more than those who were righteous. Mm -hmm. Jesus actually sought out the ones who we ourselves would judge and say, I don't want nothing to do with that person. Mm -hmm. Jesus sought that person out. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at how Jesus treated all people, treated them with nothing but love, nothing but honor, nothing but respect. We just had Sunday school lessons where Jesus was arrested and looked at how he treated those who arrested him. Look at how he treated those who had judged him unfairly with impaired judgment, nothing but with grace and with love. Again, I am left wondering why are so many who claim to be a child of God, the total opposite of Christ, when it comes to how we judge others and how we treat others. We ought not be leading a charge of hatred that stirs up and causes nothing but division in our world today. No, we as a child of God, we ought to be leading a charge that will put others high, lift them up in their soul, lift them up in their spirit. We ought to be leading a charge where people are not judged and treated so unfairly, so shrewdly in our world today. We should be leading a charge that is of love, regardless of who somebody is, regardless of what they look like. We should be leading a charge of love, whether they are saint or sinner, we ought to be loving somebody. Whether they are poor or rich, we ought to be loving somebody. The believer ought to minister the Lord to all people. The believer ought to minister grace to all people, regardless of who they are. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Correction is needed in the hearts of those who aren't doing this today. To correct this, we must first have that veil taken off of our eyes again. Have Jesus lift that veil from off of your eyes. We must then allow ourselves to be led by the spirit and the spirit will guide us in how we ought to judge somebody. The spirit will guide us in how we ought to treat all people with love, with mercy, with gentleness, with kindness and and with grace. When we love our neighbor, we will regard them. We will cherish them all very highly. And at the same time, again, we will also regard and we will love our Lord very highly as well. If we, the child of God, truly love our neighbor as we love ourselves, we would never judge them by their cover. 
we will remove such way of thinking from our heart. Mm -hmm. We will remove that hatred because that's what I tell you it is. We remove that hatred from our heart. Mm -hmm. We will truly take time to use the gift of discernment that the Lord has given to us to judge someone and to treat all people fairly, mm -hmm. to treat all people just. Again, as the Lord is faithful and just and fair, we must also strive to be the same mm -hmm. as well. That was a saying that I grew up hearing, and I believe maybe you did as well. And that saying, it was this. It was said to be careful how you treat those who you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. The reason why it was said was because you never know who you are entertaining. Mm -hmm. you, you never know who you have come in contact with. Mm -hmm. You may have been in contact or entertained an, an angel. Mm -hmm. That's what they would say. They would say, be careful how you treat people. Mm -hmm. Try to treat people, all people with kindness and with love mm -hmm. is what they would say. Mm -hmm. And I say that this saying reminds me a lot of, of what Jesus said in the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel. When he spoke of how he was treated when he was hungry. Mm -hmm. When he spoke of how he was treated when he was thirsty. Mm -hmm. When he spoke of how he was treated when he was a stranger. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that those who had fed him, those who had gave him drink and those who had took him in, Jesus said that those would be rewarded and that they would be rewarded with entering into the heavenly kingdom mm -hmm. because they had loved him. Mm -hmm. Then there was a flip side to that. Those that did not love him, right. those who did not feed him, those who did not give him drink, those who did not take him in when he was a stranger. Jesus said that they were sent into everlasting punishment. So I leave you with this thought today. Be careful of how you judge somebody. Be careful how you treat someone because you never know when you have come in contact with Christ himself. So we ought to be careful about that. Think highly of others, judge them fairly. You ain't perfect yourself. Remember that. And then at the end of the day, remember that the Lord loves you in your imperfection. So you love somebody in their imperfection as well. Amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. Amen.